What do you think would improve decorum in the House of Commons? Yeah, they all have their own agendas, so I'm, I'm not sure how you can get around that uh, debate, I guess. Just uh, trying to uh, get the facts out there. And uh, actual facts, not, not uh, clouded for their particular political views, that kind of thing, I think. Instead of being so defensive, just listen. And maybe the opposition has some good ideas. Instead of just everybody's opposed and they just rub each other the wrong way, maybe you should listen more. Yeah, we're just, we're becoming a little too much like the United States, I think, in terms of the political willingness to veer into ground and territory that was unthinkable five, 10, 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, bring back amicable Jack, you know? The death of Jack Layton was a horrible, horrible thing for Canadian democracy, I think, because I think he was a role model for, you know, working across the aisle, not being so entrenched in your ideology, you know? Well, I, I watch that on TV, you know, their uh, question periods and that. And just for once, I'd like to see the, uh, the member answer the question that's given them. They n never answer it. And, uh, you know, I, it's just what a waste of time. Do you think things have gotten better or worse? Worse. Um, the decorum? I don't know. Um, perhaps a, a more uh, authoritarian speaker. I don't know the new speaker, what he's like, because I haven't seen him in action, but uh, it's the speaker that controls the, the house, really, and can put an end to any monkey business that's going on or anything that's not proper. Um, less volatility, way less volatility. I think that now people are making things partisan that shouldn't be partisan, like healthcare, like education, like housing. Um, and I think there's just way too much politicization of things that shouldn't be. Um, for example, all of the vaccination crisis with COVID, I think that was a massive issue. So yeah, less volatility and less anger about <laughs> nonpartisan issues, to be honest. Okay, great. I think there needs to be more unity on, uh, on subjects to Canadians. I think that uh, having political divide over pettiness and over little things that aren't important to the Canadian people uh, is, is unnecessary. So they need to get rid of all that pettiness and uh, yeah, come together, help Canadians as a whole. We have three parties here, so all three major parties at least work together. <laughs> There's nowhere to go but up. <laughs> hmm. um, I think the speaker should enforce civil discourse in the House of Commons. Um, I think the leaders as well need to speak to their caucuses about the decorum that's required. What is required? This You are elected here as representatives. There's a certain amount of dignity that comes with that. You're certainly paid to have that dignity. They need to act that way. We're retired school teachers. We would never tolerate that at all in our classrooms, ever. <laughs> so true. They can act more like adults and not children. It seems like it's kindergarten I'm watching, really and truly, you know, all the shouting and name calling. But yeah. Grow up. <laughs> that would help. You know, there's there's left, there's right. There's not a lot of common ground these days, especially you know. Hopefully, with uh, with an election coming up, you know, uh, people seem to stick to their talking points, and uh, you know, it's pretty divisive. Um, you know, from from what I can see, but you know, I, I hope on the on the core matters, you know, they can you know they can come together. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one right now. There's uh, you know there's not a lot of not a lot of common ground between the two sides. That's a, that's a tough question because they seem to waste a lot of time doing that. So to be honest, I don't really have a good answer for it, but it's definitely something that needs to stop. Um, giving the speaker uh, the proper sanctions that would work. Removing people from the floor. Removing people from the floor. Anything yep. else? No, I I think that's a good start. I'm not certain. Uh, it, it's rather difficult to do. Uh, I, I don't think there's any, uh, it, it's such an established pattern at the moment. I'm not certain that there is a way to do that. Just let it go? Yeah, uh, well, I'd like it to, to be uh, less uh, rancorous, but uh, I'm, I'm not clear that there is any uh, actual procedural way to accomplish that. Doesn't the speaker do that? Do they listen to the... I mean, I taught, so I made sure that I had control of my classroom because if everybody's talking, I can't teach and nobody's listening and nobody's learning. For many things in life, I take the, the um, 
everything of my classroom and make it bigger and put it into everyday mm -hmm. context, if you yeah. will. So I've never understood where you're going to get very far if everybody's screaming at each other. I don't. I think we should be working together, not yelling at each other. And I think a lot of it is sometimes for show, and we don't need that. Uh, well, I thought there were rules already in place. I think it's a question of enforcing them, and I do think it is the speaker's responsibility to call to order. Um, so I don't know what, what else can be done because the rules are in place, basically. I, I, I doubt you're going to ever make changes to that. It's part of the process. Uh, yes, it appears to be silly, but uh, that's the nature of the beast.